It was a very convoluted time. There were a multitude of secret societies. From about 1888, well into the 1920s, hundreds of secret societies formed, reformed, and gave birth to new and even more secret subgroups. Some were dangerous nationalistic orders, like the Serbian Black Hand Society, responsible for the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. Black Hand Society was largely responsible for the First World War. And many of the era's dark fellowships were simply racist, sharing the sentiments of Lanz von Liebenfels, who believed Aryans were gods. He also believed that the Jews were literally children of the devil. The 30 years leading to the formation of the Vril Society was an era obsessed with the strange combination of racial solidarity and the occult. Magic and occult ideas dominated thinking of virtually every class of society in the late 19th century. But of all the mystics of the time, one person's writings may have been the genesis of the phenomenal occult frenzy. Madame Elaine Petrova Blavatsky. I would say that Blavatsky provided the metaphysical framework that has gathered together the vast, vast streams of the ancient wisdom into a coherent system. Blavatsky founded the Theosophical Society in 1875 and established herself as a kind of sage in the occult realm. Theosophists believe in a combination of Asian and occult ideas to promote the concept of a superior Aryan race. She traveled throughout the world for spiritual reasons. Madame Blavatsky wrote, well, several books, but a particularly influential one was The Secret Doctrine. It was based on knowledge she acquired in India and Tibet. She claimed that she got her teachings from secret messages from Mahatmas in the Himalayas. This groundbreaking book, written in 1885, did something no other book had ever done. It combined science and religion. Most sources say that the Vril Society was founded in 1918 at a mysterious meeting in the Bavarian town of Berchtesgaden. It was a holiday center and would later house the country retreat of Adolf Hitler. It is said that in a mountain lodge, a group of occultists and high-ranking German nationalists secretly gathered to create a powerful inner circle called the All-German Society for Metaphysics, otherwise known as the Vril Society. Essentially, it was founded by uh, two people, Rudolf von Sebottendorf. Von Sebottendorf had been very active in the occult movement. He was a Freemason, an alchemist, and a founder of the Tula Society. Their belief in a mythical civilization was a precursor to Nazi Aryan ideas. The real name was Adam Glauer, and who was the son of an engine driver, but he gave himself, awarded himself a title of nobility. <laughs> In creating the Vril Society, von Sebottendorf was joined by a man who would darkly influence world history. The other main person within it was Dietrich Eckhart. He was said to have strong powers of persuasion, particularly in his anti-Semitic writings. Dietrich Eckhart was Hitler's closest personal friend between 1918 and his death in 1923. Eckhart believed he was paving the road for Germany's own savior. He was, in many respects, a mad genius. And it's no accident he spent a great part of his time in and out of mental institutions. The founder of the Frill went by a very curious name. John the Baptist. And we all know that in the Bible, John Baptist is a sort of a paver of the road for the true Messiah. Eckhart was also one of the masterminds behind the Nazi party. Eckhart saw Hitler as the German messiah. He saw him as the man sent to save the country. And he wasn't the only Vril founder who felt that way. It has been suggested that these two men were joined by two women, mediums responsible for finding the hidden occult truths and harvesting Vril. 
in those days, it was the golden age of what was known as the physical mediumship, where not only were they forever moving objects and table turning and levitating, but also they used to produce a substance called ectoplasm out of their bodies. One of these mediums is said to have predicted the new German messiah. During her state of trance, she declared that the apparition she had given form to was going to be the next German messiah, who she proceeded to name as Adolf Hitler. So the Vril Society may have indeed paved the way for the person they would promote as the country's messiah. Their next step would have been to secure his ultimate weapon, Vril. They believed that that would give them power. This occult group of German nationalists may have grown quickly to become an elite inner circle of the Nazi party. Many of the top leaders, including Hitler himself, were members of the Vril Society. Karl Harrer, Anton Drexler and Dietrich Eckhart are three of the most important figures in the transition from the Vril Society to the Nazi Party. Eckhart was considered the darkest of them all and dedicated to Hitler's success. He did have certain perverse gifts and not least of which was his ability to uh, train Hitler in the use of, you know, what one might loosely call the power of a human heart and human mind. Hermann Göring, commander of the Luftwaffe, was said to be a member. It is virtually certain that he was introduced to it in around 1920, probably by Dietrich Eckhart. Alfred Rosenberg, Minister of the Third Reich, probably a member. Rosenberg believed that the Aryan race was superior to every other, of course. And, you know, he believed that Jesus was not Jewish, but an Aryan. Rudolf Hess, Deputy Führer, another likely member. Hess believed everything. He used to sleep with magnets under his bed to try and draw off harmful emanations. Martin Bormann, chief of the Nazi party chancellery, also thought to be a member. Martin Bormann was probably considered the most evil one. He was an avowed and open Satanist. He was quite categorical about his desire to exterminate Christianity as well as Judaism because he saw Christianity as simply, as he called it, a Jewish perversion. And the most senior Nazi in the Vril Society, Adolf Hitler himself. A great many of the Vril Society members were conscious Satanists. And these evil men were emblazoned with a symbol, the swastika. The darkest side of the real was undoubtedly their belief, which dates back many thousands of years, that to sacrifice a young child will give more power than anything else if you are turning to the darkness. And that is what they did. After the First World War, many illegitimate and orphaned children lived in Bavaria children whose disappearance would go unnoticed. And legend had it that the vril of a child was the most concentrated and most powerful. They were seen as being gateways between the astral and the material world in a way that adults were not. So consequently, they were ideal victims for human sacrifice. For human sacrifice. To the year 1917, Four men and a woman met here in the Viennese Café Schopenhauer. The young Maria Ortisch, a spiritualistic medium from Zagreb. The student and fighter pilot Lothar Weitz. The occultist, orientalist and officer Karl Haushofer. Rudolf von Sebottendorf, an occultist who had recently returned from the Orient. As well as Prelate Gernot from the Order of Knights Templar. Their subject was the coming of the new age. They spoke of secret revelations, the spear of destiny, 
the magical violet black stone. They discussed the possibility of making transmedial contact with the ancient Germanic and Babylonian deities, Ishtar Ostara and Isais, and of communicating with distant worlds, not only on this side, but also on the other. It is quite likely that this coffee house meeting witnessed the birth of the secret Tula Society, which in turn later spawned the German National Socialist Party, the SS, Black Sun and the Friel Society, which in its turn gave a foundation to the occult activities of the Third Reich,